spine or vascular pain. Vascular claudication refers to lower extremity pain secondary to arterial insufficiency. It usually occurs in patients with peripheral arterial diseases. The buildup of atherosclerotic plaques will lead to arterial stenosis. There is a mismatch between the oxygen demand and the oxygen supply in the lower extremity. Pain due to vascular claudication classically starts distally within the calf and the leg and radiates proximal, especially during walking. Predictable walking distance before the onset of pain is more common in vascular claudication. Patients with vascular claudication relieve their symptoms with stopping. Vascular claudication pain may be confused with lumbar stenosis, spine pain. Narrowing of the spinal canal and the spinal foramen will give neurogenic claudication, nerve pain. The pain from lumbar stenosis radiates from proximal to distal. In neurogenic claudication, which is heaviness and cramps of the calves, the patient will walk a certain distance and then get the pain. The patient with neurogenic claudication relieve their symptoms by leaning forward or sitting down. In vascular claudication, the pain starts distal because there is not enough blood supply going distally and because the circulation is poor distally. In vascular claudication, the symptoms usually appear after walking the same distance each time and resolve with rest, even standing still. In vascular claudication, the shopping cart sign is not helpful. Flexing the spine is not helpful because the problem is not the spine. The problem is the poor circulation and the muscle movement that needs circulation and oxygen. Neurogenic claudication and vascular claudication may coexist. Walking is bad for both conditions. Sitting relieves the symptoms in both conditions. Stopping and standing still is good for vascular claudication, but still causes symptoms for lumbar spinal stenosis. Using a stationary bicycle will relieve the symptoms of lumbar stenosis, but it will aggravate the symptoms in vascular claudication. Postural changes of the spine will make neurogenic claudication worse. However, this will not affect vascular claudication. Vascular claudication will be affected by muscle function, such as walking or riding a bicycle. In neurogenic claudication, leaning over while riding a bicycle will relieve the symptoms in the same way as the shopping cart sign. The flexion increases the size of the neural framing and will increase the space for the thecal sac. Careful examination of the patient with lumbar spinal stenosis should include evaluation of the peripheral pulses and the evaluation for decreased, asymmetric, or absent pulses. Examination of the pulses on both feet should be done routinely. Pulses are normal in neurogenic claudication, but may be abnormal in vascular claudication. In vascular claudication, changes in the lower extremity also may be present of an ulcer, edema, or skin changes in the form of shiny, hairless, dystrophic skin. What is the clinical picture of somebody with vascular claudication and neurogenic claudication? A patient that will have both, which is not unusual. So you'll find an elderly woman with difficulty in ambulating more than one block. She will have cramps in her leg, and leg feels heavy. 
and after 100 feet, she has to sit down. Her feet will burn at night, and her calves hurt more than her thigh. So clearly, this is a picture of somebody with vascular claudication. But she can shop for her groceries. But she got to lean forward on the shopping cart to ease her pain. When we get the MRI, we see moderate stenosis at L4, L5, and L5-S1. We see in our x-rays there is calcification of her aorta. When we examine her, she has no weakness, no numbness. So clearly, that patient has lumbar stenosis also. She needs a vascular workup because her pain is distal in her legs and because of burning in her feet and her x-ray is showing calcification of the aorta. She have the two conditions, vascular and neurogenic conditions. The vascular pain gets worse with walking and is improved when the patient stops walking and sits down or stands still. And the patient has lumbar stenosis because she can shop leaning forward on the shopping cart. Distinguishing between neurogenic claudication and vascular claudication is important because the management is different. And because both may occur together and the treatment may be more complicated. When you look at the x-ray of the lumbosacral area to assess the spine, check for calcification in the aorta because this may cause an arterial insufficiency and vascular claudication to the patient. You may start by ordering an ankle brachial index, ABI. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.